Welcome back, everybody. In this session, we have Peter Campbell. Peter Campbell is an avid backcountry skier, kite surfer, cyclist, traveler, and search and rescue volunteer. He has skied the backcountry in Australia, France, Switzerland, Norway, North America, and Japan. During this session, Peter will cover some recently published information, which is now available at backcountryskiing.org. Hi, everyone. Peter Campbell here. Welcome. Uh, just, uh, I'm speaking from Wurundjeri land here in Melbourne. Fine sunny day. Uh, yeah, so with all this COVID stuff going on, it's nice to share the vibe on some, uh, some skiing that we hopefully will have later on in the season or next season. Uh, just starting with a new website that uh, a few of uh, people from Bush Search and Rescue mainly have started up, backcountryskiing.org. And so this is to provide some information about uh, backcountry safety, how to gain experience, and also skiing downhill, uphill techniques. And uh, there's some information on gear as well. So here you can see decision-making, uh, avalanche safety and emergencies, as well as some general information about backcountry safety and backcountry gear, uh, following up from what Glenn was saying, some information about different types of skis and ski bindings, skins, crampons, snowshoes, and uh, an article on split boards as well. So moving over to the action. This is a friend of mine, Nick Tapp. Uh, we were skiing in late October, back in around about 1989, and there was a huge dump of snow. Uh, the Hotham Road was closed, all the snow clearing machinery was away. We walked up bung Bungalow Spur and scored some fantastic powder late in uh, October, skiing off Little Feather Top here. And these are old photos, so uh, we're on um, lighter gear, free hill gear at this stage skiing tellies and uh, had a ball. I think we're the only two people on the hill with some dramatic atmospherics. So I think Feathertop is probably my favourite place to go skiing. Here's a couple of uh, friends on our way up Estale Spur and uh, having retrieved a food dump for an extended stay up on the, on the mountain. Again, back in uh, probably early 90s, this one, I think. Ian Anger on the right, Nick Tap on the left. And here's an old shot of me skiing one of the chutes at Blue Lake, heading down uh, spring snow, some quite steep chutes there. And in winter, there's ice climbing in this vicinity as well on the steeper sections. And there's also some avalanche hazard here and a uh, some, some cornices up, up high as well. So it's an area where you've got to be mindful of safety, including not skiing out on the ice and going in the lake. Camping in the lake catchments around here is now banned. And uh, this is a, an interesting shot for a ski touring. So it's spring, but I think we'd had two or three days of major rain, uh, sitting in a snow cave and everything got quite wet. So when the sun came out, we took an opportunity here to um, to uh, dry everything out. And uh, this is three, three wise monkeys sussing out a ski slope in the vicinity of the Sentinel. So really fine skiing in uh, Lady Northwood's Canyon and surrounds. And uh, the weather up on the main range is actually something to be very uh, mindful of. The weather can change rapidly and there's also occasionally some uh, very strong winds. So be careful about selecting campsites, getting pinned down by bad weather. Think about what your escape route might be. Here's a photo of a trip we did last year. I think we were skiing in the vicinity of Mount Twynham coming up from Guthica. This is uh, Senior Sergeant Greg Paul. 
we'll be talking later at uh, 3 50 pm on uh, emergencies in alpine areas so we're skiing back up twinem here having done some runs around lady northcote's canyon and in the far distance in the background you can see mount bogong quite a lot of snow this year and uh, here's greg doing a run down off the sentinel area down into the steeper creeks Mostly safe run out, but uh, obviously there's a few rocks to dodge here as well. And in the background, looking across Lady Northcote's Canyon there, you can see the summit of Mount Townsend, which is the second highest mountain, or the third highest. Actually, I think Twynham is the second highest. So lots of big peaks in the main range. Lots of really good ski terrain. Jumping continents, we have uh, New Zealand. This is Graham Saddle having just skied up the Rudolph Glacier from the Tasman Glacier. I was on a trip here with uh, two buddies and a guide. Guided trip, we were on, all on free hill gear, including the guide. And then after the trip, we did some solo skiing up to uh, this location. Fantastic scenery, very, uh, very heavily glaciated coming up the Rudolph Glacier. There's a ski route that comes through here, uh, an epic ski traverse called the Symphony on Skis, which uh, I'd love to do someday. This is looking down on the top section of the Franz Josef Glacier, which descends down to the west coast, Westland, New Zealand. So to travel on glaciers, um, there's a boundary here between backcountry skiing and cross country. Um, you need ropes, harnesses, etc ice axe crampons to, uh, to travel safely where there's glaciers. And here's a shot of Nick skiing off the Graham Saddle. We had some lovely fresh snow up high here and uh, you'll see in the background there's Mount Cook on the left and Mount Tasman on the right. So some wonderful country there, fantastic Alps, the equal of basically anything you'll see in Europe. And the day we arrived, we flew in by ski plane up to Tasman Saddle and camped there. Um, we skied up the Hochstetter Dome and here's Nick skiing off the top of that, which is uh, a lovely location, sort of right on the boundary of the main divide there. And so looking down at the sea on the west coast uh, and the ridge you can see, the shaded ridge is the Maximilian Ridge, which Sir Edmund Hillary used to train on when he before he did his first ascent of Mount Everest. Not very often climbed. And this is us uh, skiing up the Darwin Glacier, the upper Darwin Glacier. And we did one major peak early to Beaumont, uh, which was about a three, four hour ski from the hut. And then a much quicker descent, massive glacier up there. Some uh, big crevasses. And this is descending early to Beaumont. So the advantage of having a guide is uh, he'll pick routes that ordinarily you mightn't do as someone who's unfamiliar with the area, including jumping over some, some crevasses at speed. Trevor Street was the guide. Um, he just marked out a, an X on the snow and said, start here, point your skis and uh, don't look down, <laughs> which was a, a quick way to descend rather than having to muck around with ropes, etc. So this is a short video looking at the upper Franz Joseph uh, guided trip. Two guides just there on the left, Elke, Braun, Elvert. And down at the west coast of New Zealand here, and then back across to the Alps. Quite a good snow cover. coming around to Ely to Beaumont. So another shot was taking skiing down the other side of Ely to Beaumont on the previous trip. This trip was 2015. Coming back to the glacier, you can see it's quite heavily crevassed.
hence the need for Mount Tasman in the background, hence the need for um, the mountaineering gear in addition to the normal ski touring gear. Uh, jumping continents here, uh, this is moving to um, the USA, California. Five hours drive from Los Angeles is the Sierra Nevada, the High Sierra. This is a friend of mine, Dave Braun. We did a ski tour here uh, that traversed the Sierra Nevada range back in the 90s. And there were seven Americans and two Australians. And uh, we were out for nine days. And over that period, we saw nobody, which was quite remarkable. And in the background on the top left there, you can see across to Mount Williamson and Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney being the highest peak in the, on the continental US. So this is a really great area to be ski touring, but quite high, lots of altitude. Jumping continents again. Uh, so this is Alpine touring on tele gear. Uh, early trip I did skiing the Hopeworth back in 1985. Uh, this is skiing up from the Argentier hut up the Chardonnay Glacier on day two of the Hulk route. And as you can see, glaciers uh, require that additional equipment and also sometimes to get through the, the, the more difficult coals passes, um, you might need to do an abseil to get down the steep bits or a bit of an ice climb to get up it. Moving along to uh, the end of the Hot Route. This is near the end of the Hot Route. From here, it's all the way downhill to Zermatt. Zermatt being about where my right heel is down the valley there. Uh, this is a little ski peak um, on the way, close to the border with Italy. And it's Tet Valpoline and dramatic scenery here, some of the best on the route. Uh, the Matterhorn is the high peak on the right with the Italian Ridge descending down to the right there, the right skyline. And then the other peak to the right is Dont de Harams, which is a spectacular climbing uh, peak in the area. Switzerland on the left here, Italy on the right. And another area in uh, Switzerland that is uh, very dramatic is the Berner Oberland, probably less visited than the areas like the Hochbrut and the Ranzo Matt. And in fact, this is on the second highest mountain in, um, in Switzerland. And looking across to uh, the Matterhorn in the background. The, um, this was a technical climb to get to the top of this, uh, around about uh, grade two plus in New Zealand standards, the Finster Ahorn, looking across the Berner Overland. On this trip with two Swiss, Locals, I skied, we skied, um, we skied uh, five 4,000 metre peaks in four days, which was sensational. And moving across to uh, a venue close to Australia where we get some fantastic skiing is uh, Japan. So this is a Sayadaki, the highest mountain in on Hokkaido. I was there with uh, my American friend Dave a couple of years ago and we skied up above the lifts, which is where we are here, scaled the, uh, the ridge on the right there and skied off the summit, getting back just before dark, fantastic snow. So Japan is blessed with probably the most reliable snow in terms of powder. And here's Dave enjoying the um, enjoying the backcountry. Powder, uh, very keen tele skier, Dave, uh, using quite heavy gear. And that's an example of uh, some of the powder. We skied backcountry peaks, uh, Shiribitsu, there's a volcano close to the ski resort of Rizutsu. We also skied at Naseko, which is in the vicinity as well. So lots of terrain and some hazards over there in terms of avalanche, so you, you need to be careful. And guided trips give you the advantage of uh, 
local knowledge and particularly weather, um, as well as locations, the best place to go. On this trip, we were just finding our own way around. And then springtime in Japan is also very good. This is a place called Hakoda, which is on the north of the island of Honshu. And the uh, main peak is up there on the right. There's actually a series of volcanoes in this area. There's one lift going up there, a big uh, tram, ropeway they call it. it. Takes about 30, 40 people per ride. And I teamed up with a couple of these Japanese locals who were very friendly and well organized. So the backcountry skiing goes up over those peaks and down the other side where there's no lift. And these guys luckily had got uh, taxis organized. And the backcountry skiing uh, that you can see here is uh, all Japanese people going out on guided trips. Uh, very popular in this area. There's a combination of snowboarders using snowshoes to come up and also some people on Alpine touring gear. And when you finish the run, you get the bonus. There's a uh, cafe here, Japanese restaurant, and really good food. Jump in the car and drive around and then do it again. Just finishing with uh, another backcountry vibe, this is Norway. So I'm doing another presentation at uh, 3.10 on backcountry ski locations in Norway. So this is the uh, Lofoten Islands and uh, I'll be showing some more photos about that later. <laughs>